Hollywood shows P-51. Mustangs escorting bombers to Berlin, shooting down Mi-262 jets, dominating the skies. Every movie makes them invincible. Here's the truth. P-51s had the highest loss rate of any American fighter in the 8 Air Force. More Mustang pilots died over Europe than Thunderbolt and Lightning pilots combined. Let me destroy five myths Hollywood can't stop repeating. First myth, the Mustang saved the bomber offensive. Wrong. P-47 Thunderbolts flew 70% of escort missions. Thunderbolts dropped more bombs, flew more sorties, and claimed more ground kills. But here's the number that matters. Thunderbolts had half the loss rate of Mustangs. For every Thunderbolt lost, 2.1 Mustangs went down. The invincible Mustang was actually the most vulnerable American fighter. A Thunderbolt pilot from the 56th Fighter Group testified, We'd watch Mustangs getting bounced while escorting bombers. Pretty planes, but one hit to the cooling system and they were done. Our Thunderbolts took 20 millimeter cannon hits and kept flying. We called Mustangs one-hit wonders. Second lie, Mustangs dominated German fighters. The kill ratio was three to one by late war. Sounds impressive. The Thunderbolt achieved four to one. The Navy's Hellcat achieved 19 to one. The Mustang's kill ratio was actually the lowest of any major American fighter. Why? Because Mustangs flew the most dangerous missions. Deep penetration escorts where Germany concentrated their best pilots and newest fighters. But here's where it gets interesting. Third myth. The Mustang was the best dogfighter. At high altitude, yes. Below 20,000 feet, the Fokker Wolf 190 was superior. The Messer Schmidt 109 Gustav outclimbed it. The Mustang's laminar flow wings, which gave it range, also gave it vicious stall characteristics. Enter a turning fight below 15,000 feet, and you were dead. German ace Johannes Steinhoff wrote, American pilots believed their own propaganda about the Mustang. They'd try to turn fight at low altitude. We'd watch them stall and spin. No need to shoot. They'd kill themselves. Fourth myth, Chuck Yeager and other aces proved the Mustang's superiority. Yeager shot down a ME-262 jet in a Mustang. What Hollywood doesn't show, he dove on it while it was landing. Gear down, flaps extended, no ammunition. That's not air combat, that's execution. Of 27 jets claimed by Mustangs, 23 were shot down taking off or landing. The Mustang couldn't catch an operational 262. Physics made it impossible. Now for the biggest lie, the Mustang's range won the war. Yes, it could reach Berlin, but here's what killed crews. The Mustang achieved that range by sacrificing everything else. Armor, minimal. Self-sealing tanks, barely adequate. Structural strength, marginal. The fuselage tank behind the pilot made the plane uncontrollable when full. Pilots flew the first two hours in constant danger of entering an unrecoverable spin. The numbers are shocking. In 1944, 8th Air Force lost 421 Mustangs to enemy action. They lost 363 to mechanical failure and accidents. Nearly as many Mustangs killed their own pilots as the Germans did. The glycol cooling system was so vulnerable that one bullet anywhere in the coolant loop meant the engine seized in 90 seconds. A Mustang pilot from the 357th Fighter Group revealed we lost more planes to engine failures than flak. The Merlin was magnificent when it worked. When coolant leaked, you had one minute to bail out. We'd see two or three Mustangs per mission just disappear. No combat, just mechanical failure over enemy territory. Let's talk about what really happened. The Mustangs succeeded because America could afford to lose them. 
2,200 Mustangs were lost in Europe. America built 15,000. For every Mustang destroyed, six were already built. Germany couldn't match that mathematics. The Mustang won through attrition, not superiority. The ground attack myth is worse. Movies show Mustangs strafing everything. Reality, Mustangs were terrible at ground attack. The radiator was underneath the fuselage, one rifle bullet, and the engine was done. Thunderbolts could absorb massive ground fire. Mustangs couldn't. Ground attack loss rates. Thunderbolt, 7%. Mustang, 19%. Here's the statistic nobody mentions. Pilot experience. By late 1944, the average German pilot had 20 hours training. American Mustang pilots had 300 hours. That's not aircraft superiority. That's training superiority. Put equal pilots in both aircraft and the results change dramatically. The final truth, Hollywood will never show. The Mustang was chosen for long-range escort because it was expendable. Thunderbolts were needed for ground attack. Lightnings were too expensive. The Mustang was cheap, available, and good enough. Not the best, good enough with acceptable loss rates. General Jimmy Doolittle admitted after the war, the Mustang wasn't our best fighter. It was our most available fighter with adequate range. We accepted higher losses for strategic necessity. 15,800 Mustangs were built. 2,200 were destroyed in combat. That's a 14% combat loss rate, the highest of any major American fighter. The Mustang didn't win through excellence. It won through mass production and acceptable casualties. The P-51 Mustang was a good fighter that Hollywood turned into mythology. In reality, it was a calculated compromise. Range over survivability. Quantity over quality. Strategic necessity over pilot safety. More American pilots died in Mustangs than any other fighter, because that was the plan. Acceptable losses for strategic goals. That's not heroism. That's arithmetic. Word count, 924.